Hello YouTube, it's Michael Gallagher here, the Media Preacher, uh, back this time with a music review. I haven't done that many, so I thought it was time to perhaps do uh, another review of an album that I'm really fond of and have really fond memories of. I thought perhaps review the album and talk about my history with it and ask you about yours and what you think of it. Or for people that are just interested in listening to the band or listening to the album, um, perhaps check out the review and I can give you a sort of an overview as to what the album is. Uh, but the album that I'm going to review today is an album by a band called Steely Dan, uh, who essentially were a 70s uh, rock, uh, jazz fusion type band, um, who essentially made albums, I think, until 1980, and then took a huge break until about 1996, I stand to be corrected on that, when they then sort of came back and did some more albums uh, in the late 90s and in the early 2000s. Um, but I want to go back firstly to one of their classic albums, and the album that I want to talk about today is probably their breakthrough album, the album that really made them as international stars. It was released, I think, on the 20th of February, 1974. Sorry, not 1973. Uh, and the album is called... Pretzel Logic. Um, who the hell knows what the album title refers to? If you do know, please tell me because I haven't got a clue. Um, but a lot of the uh, song lyrics in this album and in most of the other Steely Dan albums can be fairly esoteric and some of them can be uh, bemusing, uh, for want of a better word. Um, but this was Steely Dan's third album. The first two albums they uh, released uh, were not as commercially successful as this album was. Uh, I think it reached number eight on the Billboard 200 charts, and it is included in the top 500 albums of all time by Rolling Stone, um, but it doesn't chart quite as highly as some of the other albums I've talked about. Uh, this charts at number 385, uh, but still quite an achievement to be in uh, a list of the top 500 albums of all time, given uh, the amount of albums that have been released over the years. Um, but essentially, this album uh, is Steely Dan coming of age. And it shows signs of what the band were about to become. Now, I listened to the album, and I was reading off about it a bit before I started the review. And I made a note over here that this actually was a concept album. And the band had a concept that they wanted to attempt to complete, I'll get this quote right, as many short musical statements within the three-minute pop format as was possible. So essentially, Steely Dan were trying to create um, musical statements within three-minute songs uh, on this album, which I think, on the whole part, they actually did quite well, although I don't think the songs are all three minutes and under. I think some of the songs are pushing five minutes, particularly one of the more popular tracks in the album, uh, a track called Ricky Don't Lose That Number, which was uh, a huge breakthrough track, really, for Steely Dan at the time. Um, also, as well, given that that was the uh, that was the idea behind the album, that was the concept behind the album. Um, Steely Dan really give uh, some credence as well to jazz pioneers on this album. I'm not really sure how that fits, but for instance, they do uh, a cover essentially of a song called the East St. Louis Toodle Doo, which was uh, a song by Duke Ellington, I think originally that they sort of updated and uh, made their own uh, on this album. But let's talk about the album a little bit. Um, the album uh, starts with the most popular track from the album, and a track that a lot of people, perhaps people who don't even know Steely Dan very well, would know, uh, a track called Ricky Don't Lose That Number. Um, for me, it's a great song, and the first time you hear it, you think, God, yeah, that is a fantastic piece of writing. But it tends to grind on you a little bit after you've heard it a lot over a number of listens. There are other tracks on the album that I think are much, much better than the radio hit, which essentially Ricky Don't Lose That Number was. But it's got a great little piano kind of bass intro, and it, it, it's, it's a fantastic song. Um, moving on then, you've got a song called Night By Night, which is a really uh, exciting, dynamic song. Uh, it's got some quite heavy strings on it, um, and it's got a really good, funky sort of bass line and guitar uh, that just play fantastically well together. Um, and again, really brilliant song, absolutely love it. Moving on, uh, there's a slower track on the album called Any Major Dude Will Tell You, which you can tell is one of those tracks that was perhaps originally written on an acoustic guitar, and it could be beautifully strummed on an acoustic guitar and played um, in a naked form, I think, in that way. Uh, but again, it's really great, 
after having this fast track of Night by Night, it's sort of a really good release for the album. Um, and then moving on to my favourite track of the album, uh, a, a track called Barrytown, which um, is a piano-based track, essentially. But uh, brilliant arrangement, brilliant chord structure, uh, fantastic lyrics, and just a really, really, really great song. And then Side One closes uh, with the Duke Ellington cover, the East St. Louis Toodledoo. Um, moving on to side two, we start off with an up-tempo track called Parker's Band, which again is really, really great. And Donald Fagan singing all the songs on this album, which I think on the original Steely Dan albums, he didn't necessarily do the vocals on all of the songs. But on this album, he is vocalising on absolutely everything. And I think that it makes for a more cohesive sound, which is one of the reasons perhaps this album is a more cohesive Steely Dan album than the albums that came before it. Uh, Through With The Buzz is okay, but not one of my favourites. And then there's sort of a blues-infused track called Pretzel Logic, which has a real atmosphere and uh, is has a really great mood to it. And I think anybody that wants to check that out as a blues track can. Again, I'm not sure how that fits in terms of the concept of the three-minute pop song album, uh, but uh, it's, it's great anyway. Perhaps the three-minute pop song concept was how the album started. Perhaps that's its genesis. And then the album moved on as the tracks were written. Although I know that Barrytown, my favourite track on the album, wasn't written as part of the sessions for this. Because you can pick up some early demos from Steely Dan. And Barrytown's actually one of the original piano demos uh, on that. So it was, that was written years before this album was released. We then move on to my dad's favourite track on the album. Uh, a track called With A Gun. Uh, which is almost a country based acoustic guitar song. Um, fantastic. Great electric guitar riff against the acoustic. Um, interesting point about that is that I know that my dad loves it, but Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, the two main members of Steely Dan, detest the track. They don't like it and they never um, play it live. And it's the track that they always cite as a track that they wish they'd never recorded. Um, but I'm with my dad. I think it's, I think it's great. Um, and then the album finishes with two tracks. One called Charlie Freak, which is kind of um, an interesting uh, m melody idea. But I'm not sure if I love the song per se. And then Monkey In Your Soul, which I always thought was a bit of a forgettable track. Um, but tell me what you think. As I say, I think my favourite tracks on this album, probably Night by Night, Barrytown, uh, Pretzel Logic and Parker's Band. I think those four tracks are absolutely killer. And the rest of the album uh, is of a very, very high standard. Perhaps not quite as good uh, as those tracks. And Dad, I'm including With A Gun in that as well, I should say, because I think With A Gun uh, is, is brilliant. Um, so, moving on uh, to a bit more about this album. I think that Steely Dan, uh, reading about them, uh, this is an album that really defined them, but it's an, also an album that really divided the band, because originally the band had uh, Jeff Skunk Baxter playing with them, uh, and he plays on most of the early albums. Uh, Danny Diaz uh, plays on most of the early albums. And, of course, you've got Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. Um, but I think that... Walter Becker and Donald Fagan, being the, the, the writers of the songs, started to really marginalise the rest of the band with this album. Because what they were doing with the album is they'd record it with the band, and then they would bring in session players to do lots and lots of very complex overdubs uh, onto what had already been recorded. And reading about the band, I think that certainly in the sessions for this album, that really started to cause a rift between Becker and Fagan and the other members of the band. And for anybody that knows anything about Steely Dan, uh, essentially after this album, the albums that are recorded are all studio albums. Um, and Becker and Fagan use a huge uh, wealth of the very best musicians that were available in Los Angeles at the time on those albums. And so, really, Steely Dan in this album starts to become Becker and Fagan, uh, rather than the original Steely B Dan band. Um, but the band on this album are fantastic. And I think after the album, they embarked on a tour in 1974. And perhaps because the band was starting to be... Um, segmented uh, by that point uh, the, the 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 band stopped touring after 1974 right until the early 90s and presumably that was because Becker and Fagan were essentially dismissing the other members of the band and they were using uh, favoured studio musicians instead and of course uh, Jeff Skunk Banks then went on to be uh, a huge influence uh, and great guitar player in the uh, Doobie Brothers band <laughs> 
um, which is a band I've never really gotten into, um, but I don't really know where to start with their albums, so if you've got any ideas of which albums I should start with um, by listening to, please um, point me in the direction of those albums. But uh, no, I think that Jeff Skunk Bankster was a huge loss because he is a great guitar player and his guitar playing on this album is absolutely fantastic. And moving on to the album, Pretzel Logic, as I say, who knows what the meaning is. Uh, we've got the song called Pretzel Logic on the album, so but it's a blues song. Um, and the artwork on this album I always thought was absolutely fantastic. I think the artwork on all the Steely Dan albums is really, really, really strong. But this image, this photograph, is very um, provocative of a particular time in New York. Um, I forget who actually took the image now. It's on here on the in, the, the in sleeve. But there was a famous uh, pho um, and photographer at the time called Ruben Rianne, sorry, Rubenstein, uh, who took this photograph uh, just outside of Central Park in New York. I don't know if you can see, but what it actually shows is um, a man selling pretzels at a 1970s pretzel store right outside Central Park. And when you open the gate folder up, and this is the great thing about having the record, you see it's a great big long picture. It's not just that picture of the man, which is, uh, I think it's great album artwork. Um, not sure how it fits in with the concept of the album, to be honest, the three minute pop song. Uh, not sure how it really fits in with the songs in the album, um, but the photograph itself is evocative of a time and a place and I think it's one of the best Steely Dan covers. Um, tell me what you think uh, about that by all means. And then inside of the gatefold uh, there's this picture uh, of the band essentially back in the 70s. So you've got uh, Becker and Fagan there and then you've got Jeff Baxter, the skunk, over there. I think that's Danny Diaz and I'm not sure who this member of the band is. Um, I'd have to have a look on the uh, on 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 the credits, but clearly these three members of the band, as I said, became really marginalised um, during the recording uh, of this album, um, essentially. Um, but that leads on to what Steely Dan then become with their later albums. But I actually prefer some of these earlier albums than the later albums, although they're very different, I think, in terms of their style. For instance, with the later albums, the jazz chords become far more important than, in my, in, in, in my mind anyway, than the rhythms. But in these albums, the rhythms are all really, really, these early albums, especially this one and the Royal Scam, the rhythms in the songs are all really diverse and really, really interesting. And I find that engaging almost... Um, on a primeval level, it draws me to the songs. Um, and then they're using uh, standard chords and what commonly called jazz chords, uh, major sevenths, minor six, all that sort of thing, uh, in, 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 in these albums and in these songs, but not to the point where the chords are dictating the rhythms. I think the rhythms uh, on this particular album and on the albums that are before it seem to come first and seem to be more important than the chord structures. But the chord structures are fantastic um, on all of the songs, as are the rhythms, and I think that the two things are then coming together. My problem with the latest Steely Dan albums is you have to listen to them time and time again to really train your ear to, to enjoy them. Um, whereas with these earlier albums, they're much, much, much more accessible. And if you're looking to listen to a Steely Dan album or get into them for the first time, then Pretzel Logic is a great album uh, to start with, um, essentially. Now I have the album on two formats, I have the album on vinyl and on CD. I bought the CD myself because I remember my dad playing this album when I was very young and I remember him always playing with a gun on his solo acoustic guitar in his bedroom. And so when I was about 20, I think, and I was at university, I was at the shops one day and I saw uh, the Citizen box set, which was a CD box set of the entire Steely Dan catalogue to that point. Um, for sale that you could buy and so I bought that and I said to my dad where should I start and I think he was saying start around the Pretzel Logic album era and I did and it got me straight into the band uh, that and the Royal Scam for me are the two great albums from Steely Dan uh, but um, yeah so I have the Citizen box set the problem with that box set is it doesn't have the original artwork so you haven't got that fantastic cover that I've just shown you um, you've got very standard slip cases but for the money you're paying actually um, the Citizen box set because it gives you all of the catalogue up until 1980 is a fantastic way to go if you've enjoyed the albums. Um, but this I also have on vinyl of course because I'm holding it and this was my dad's original copy of Pretzel Logic. It's the copy I remember him playing 
when I was growing up, and he was good enough to let me have it when I started getting into vinyl. Uh, the Steely Dan albums that he had were one of the first things that I asked him if I could take from him. And so it's really special to me to have this particular copy of the album. And I play it all the time uh, on the turntable, um, both in the garage and the turntable behind me. And when I was looking through the record, one of the great things about this particular uh, copy of the record is that clearly in the 70s, my dad wanted to have the... Um, the tracks and the words printed out because as, as I've said the words can be very esoteric almost very odd um, at times uh, for most of these songs the lyrics are almost indecipherable and my dad obviously thought the same because uh, he wanted to know what the lyrics were presumably to understand the songs better and the album comes with a standard uh, with, with just a standard casing here so what he did, looking at this, and it's so gr I'm so happy that I've got this, uh, is he went to WH Smith's and he bought some typing paper for all of 15p uh, at the time. Presumably this was the 70s. You couldn't buy much of 15p now. And he has written all of the song lyrics out on the typing paper that he bought. And so you've got all of the lyrics written out and so you can follow them through. And my dad's handwriting... It must have taken him hours to do this, especially with a record, because it's not like having a CD where you can press pause and then skip backwards slightly. With a record, you have to take the needle off and go back, and it must have been really, really hard for him to write these out uh, back in the day. But he did, and, um, and, I'm and I'm glad he did, and I'm glad that I found them in what is now my copy of Pretzel Logic. So thanks for that, Dad. Um, but no, uh, just to finish, really, I would say this is a really, really great album. It's an album... Um, that is easily accessible because some of the later Steely Dan albums aren't quite as accessible. It's easily accessible. It's a great place to start with Steely Dan. It's a great album. And the other thing I should say about it uh, is that the sound quality of the record and the CD is really, really out of this world. Um, and I, I love hearing great sound quality, but this album is recorded brilliantly. I think Steely Dan were known for their perfectionist ways and for wanting to get everything right in the studio. That's pr presumably the genesis of why they started to alienate the other members of the band, because they wanted everything absolutely perfect. Now, this album doesn't sound clinical. It's not um, perfect in a bad way, but it's recorded absolutely brilliantly. And when you listen to it on a good pair of speakers or on headphones um, through a nice sound system, you can hear everything every single nuance in the music you can hear what every instrument is doing and the arrangements on all the songs are fantastic no instrument is stepping on another instrument's toes there are times to shine for each of the instruments it's a beautifully recorded album of really great songs and if you're looking to get into steely dan it's actually a really great place to start so um i would highly recommend pretzel logic and after you've listened to pretzel logic give the royal scam uh, a call because that takes uh, the same thing, but perhaps up a notch. And I might do a, a, a review for the Royal Scam in due course, because that has one of my all-time favourite Steely Dan songs on it, Don't Take Me Alive. Um, but no, so that's a review of Steely Dan's Pretzel Logic. Um, this is Michael Gallagher, the media preacher, signing out. <laughs>